Welcome to the Big Kickoff League of Ireland podcast with myself, Roy Shanahan, and as always, the BigKickoff.com's Nathan Doyle. And tonight, we're joined by former Longford Drogheda, Shamrock Rovers, and Shelbourne centre back, Graeme Gartland. Graeme, welcome to the Big Kickoff League of Ireland podcast. Hey, Roy. Hey, Nathan. How are you? Brilliant. Now, I want to congratulate you first of all on your new role as head of orienteering for Shamrock Rovers. Uh, you're getting up, you're getting up to them trees and mountains quite a bit now. Uh, how did the clear the head videos come from? Where did the idea come from? Um, it sort of evolved, uh, Roy, a bit because I had spoke to Mark Lynch about um, maybe doing something a little bit different last year, and Mark said, "Listen, just park it for a while. We see where we're at," and then. Um, a lad called Barry Barry McCarthy came in, um, uh, who would who had volunteered to help. Um, he walks, he does, he does some work with Sky, and he had um, said he had the idea was to do to go for a walk, and and I, my idea was a little bit different. So uh, uh, he probably put it together, and then Mark Lynch, who who does all the media stuff for Shamrock Rovers, he just said I have the guy to do it, and. We, he put he put the two of us together. I was like, "Yeah, great. That's exactly something I was looking for." So it it, it ended up being better than I thought it was going to be. Because um, the what happens is the players it they feel they're just talking to another player. Yeah. And what happens is you know this because you're you're in industry. You're asking questions, and I just have to they they look at me as if sure you know, and I'll go yeah, and then I'm, I might ask them a question that. They know what I'm asking, and they know what I'm getting at. And they go, yeah, yeah, like, and 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 it flows then that way where you know I'm not um, coming at it from a, a different angle of I'm trying to get something out of them that's not there or try and push them, and it's been brilliant. I have to say they've been really, really enjoyable. Um, I've done Pico Lopez was the first one, and it was brilliant because uh, I'd have a lot of time for Pico. And then Lee Grace, Lee Grace was very intense and, and, and he had an intenseness about him that I actually liked. I was walking with him thinking, yeah, I'd like that uh, uh, from a defender. I'm thinking I'd like that from him. Are you and seeing then, something different than you would normally if you were chatting to him? Is it, are they oh, letting down barriers? Yeah. They are, yeah, Roy. Right. They're, they're sort of going, or I never thought of it like this, but this is why I'm this way. I've, 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 like Lee Grace was talking about the structure in his life and how he likes to have things planned and how that causes trouble with him and his missus, but he sort of understanding that. But that's because I was in the army. But then they're talking about the disappointments when they were younger, that people just think a football life's great. Like, I, I think Lope, uh, Pico Lopez spoke about how he was trying to get a mortgage and how he yeah. found that tough. And everybody, Nathan, you're probably that age where like everybody's going through that at the minute so you're able to go do you know what I'm actually going through that as well Pico but even though you're a footballer you're not immune to that and that's the bit that makes them more relatable that you wouldn't get that out of an interview or you wouldn't get that out of you know coming on and talking tactics about the game and I think sometimes footballers actually want to talk about that stuff and go do you know what I, I couldn't even get card insurance because I was playing football yeah. You know, yeah. that everybody looks in and sees this great life, but underneath it all, they're actually trying so hard to keep on that route and keep on that path and be the best they can be every week and still try and have problems that people think, oh, they don't have the same problems as me. Well, in fact, they do. Yeah. But they're still trying to perform every week on a, on a Friday. And the same as people are still trying to perform every day, going to work and trying to get a mortgage or trying to get car insurance and etc. So... I think it's made them more relatable, which is a good thing. I think people look in and think, no, I, I, I relate to what they're going through. And so I think in that sense, it's been good, Roy, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I just, it, yeah, definitely. it was one thing that I didn't think about was the mortgage, you know, especially because we all knew about, you know, sometimes the 42-week contracts or even a year contract, but never thought about that in, in, in that. So that opened my eyes a little bit, you know, even though there's longer contracts going out there now, you know, your two, three, four years, still the banks are seeing it a different way than, than what we would see it, you know. And I mean, I'm not guaranteed or anyone else is guaranteed in their job to keep their job for life either, but it, there's a little bit more uh, a little bit more secure than, than what a footballer is. Um, 
Do you think the idea was for the walk through the woods was inspired by the, the Roy Keane, Gary Neville thing? Because that kind of was the first thing that I thought. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, well, maybe this is what this is, is, is all about. I, I think Gary Neville does it around about where people are comfortable doing it. So yeah. I know he's done Declan Rice in his estate. He's done, right. he done Roy Keane going for a walk with his dog, which is where Roy would be most comfortable. He done Carragher walking around Bottle or something. Uh, so yeah. he's more comfortable there. So... The reason the Hellfire Club was picked was because it overlooks the whole of Tala and a lot of people used the Jordan Cove at the walk and do and clear their head up there. And and it gave that sense of you were, you were trying to reach something. So when you got to the top, you could see the view of Tala and it linked the whole thing together. And in fairness to the likes of, the likes of Jack, I think Jack, I had Jack up there yesterday and Jack was like, I've never been up here. And when he got up to the top, he was like, I, I've never seen this before and you can see everything and he and then he's pointing out look there's and I'm showing him like there's Tallis Stadium and he's able to go oh there's Rings End so I'd be about there you know so but it, the best way of describing it is probably saying oh it's a bit like the Gary Neville one now I don't have a script or I don't have a phone no I read the questions off but I know enough about them going in that I'm able to then steer it but I, I basically say to them this goes wherever you want it to go and wherever you want to talk about, you talk about whatever you don't want to talk about, you don't talk about. This is purely to make you feel comfortable and show a side of you that's different in that you're not being asked, how did you feel about the game? What did you think? What, how did the, what the manager say? Et cetera, et cetera. They're able to show that human side to them. And some of the stuff Jack said was unbelievable yesterday. Like it was brilliant. I was looking some of the stuff Pico, Pico said to me, I could have, could have done another hour with you. Yeah. Um, because they're talking to somebody that's gone through it and knows the struggle and knows the hardship. And like you said, the, the struggle to sometimes put your first foot down in the morning because you know it's going to sting and you know you have to walk and get through it. And, or, or, you know, how you pick yourself up after a defeat or all these setbacks that people think, people think that a football's journey is that way. And, I done a talk for a, gr- a group of kids and I, I asked them, what, what do you see when you look at me? And he said, well, you're this and you're that. And I went, well, I've actually had more failures than I've had successes, but I'm still here. So you just consider, you just consider that a success, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so when you, when you look at, obviously you had an idea that you wanted to, to talk about, I suppose it's mental health, really, because... No, Barry, I think Barry, Barry would have had that. Barry brought that bit to life. Brought back that, yeah. I, okay. I had a bit where I wanted to talk to them about their journey and how they got here, because I wanted to, I wanted the kids in the academy and the kids I was coaching to understand that they went through tough times and, that's the, and our, they had a struggle to get to where they are as well. So Barry had brought in the fact that it might be a mental health thing and then Mark it, Mark Lynch. So it was really Barry's concept of doing the Hellfire Club it was Barry's concept of doing the walk. I was the one that said, oh, I'd have no problem sitting down and talking to these players. So when, when Barry suggested that idea, Mark said to him, well, I've the man for you that would do it. Yeah. And the players would have been comfortable enough because they see me around the club as well. So that helps too, you know. What's the plan Especially to go through probably. the whole squad, or or, or where, where does it go? It's a good question. I don't. I don't think we go through the whole squad. No, I think there's certain lads that I mightn't be for, and that's that's fair enough. Um, on, there might be so, the, might be some there itching to just get some stuff yeah. off their chest. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You like people that you mightn't expect. Like like yeah. Jack was like a, Jack's episode could have been an hour and a half long. So could Pico's. Where Lee Grace was like, this is my story, I'm going to go with it. And he walked me, he, he marched me up the hill and he was, he didn't stop and just kept going. And he was great and he was really good. But then afterwards, I thought they're asking me things on the way down. What did you do? What happened with you? That stuff isn't on air, but they're asking me then. I don't, I mentioned, like, I have to be careful as well, Roy, because I'm asking them the questions, but I'm asking it from a, a relatable background. So I don't want to then go, oh, I, I, like just very I sometimes re- make it relatable so I go listen I went through that I had that as well so Lee Grace was saying about how he he didn't get picked for Kennedy Cup and I said neither did I hmm. so he then goes oh you know you know what that's like and I went yeah then Pico Lopez is saying he went away he, he was playing late and 
wanted to stay. And I says, I was similar, and he used to get two buses over to play for home farm. And I said, so did I. So he then goes, oh, that's relatable. And um, so they, they then know what you've been through, so then they share more. Um, but I, I sometimes go, it's not about me, but but I'm, I'm giving it that snippet so that you feel, oh, but you understand, so now I can tell you more. So that that type of thing. But where it goes is, it goes to the players that, that want to do it, and I might go to some staff and some 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 staff that are involved in the club in terms of through the academy as well that might interest people and, and, and their story and why their story is then you can put it then in front of the the younger players that are coming through and I know obviously your connections with Luke and then you're able to go look you you can have you can go there because we, we work with, with Luke and as well as yeah. as, as Shamrock Rovers so that's the type of stuff I don't think there's like if you got two, if you got two years, if you can do it for two years, where you get, you know, a, a good group of it, it can. But it's just to make people talk and realise that footballers aren't robots neither, and they have it, they have a say in things, and they have opinions on things. Like me, Grace and Pico told a completely different story about how they ended up being a centre back. Yeah, both of them ended up centre back. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's great. Wrong, so. I haven't seen Liz yet, and I'm going to watch that. I've watched Picos, um, so I'm, 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 I'm going to be interested. I took a little quick snippet of 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 Liz, and I got that intensity feeling yeah. from it. The, the, and that was only about one minute that I watched. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 enthralling because it, it, football is all about characters and personalities. And while we talk about uh, skills, and you know. Uh, you know, talent, it's personalities and, 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 and that, that that creates a player, that moulds a player and then defines how far that player goes as well. So again, when we look at, when you talk about the, the mental health side of things, um, forming your personality and, ta- and talking to other people, uh, talking to other people forms your personality and probably will help and guide you to be make stronger decisions as you go through your football career. As you said, those lads are bouncing off you. And they're going, all oh, right, yeah, and that's what happened to Graham. And and you know, maybe that doesn't happen to happen to me because you know he said this or he said that. So it's pro- it, listen, as they say, it's good to talk, isn't it? Yeah, like again, it's just to make them comfortable that they're, they're able to, and it's their story. It's nobody else's. It doesn't doesn't have. There's no right or wrong in it. Like whatever whatever journey they've been on to get where they're all playing in the same team at the moment, that's the journey they're on. That, like whether it's somebody coming back from somewhere or somebody building up to somewhere they're both at that crossroads in that group together so again you know i've always felt see when you're talking about talent and i always think dedication is a talent that, that probably gets overlooked but where people because it's not a it's not something that you see them do with a football where you go like you, you like again we're talking to jack about it. jack was talking about being a street footballer and he says it, it's a good thing and a bad thing because they make out that you, you play like there's nothing, not nobody, nothing matters because you're playing on the street. And I was going, oh, I didn't grow up playing like that in the street. I, I grew up playing on the street, but every game mattered when you played on the street because yeah. you're playing against your brothers or you're playing against someone around the corner that if you lost, they were going to tell you you lost. So this idea that street football was played with a freedom that the, the score didn't matter, it did. And he says, yeah, and then he was going, yeah, I, and like that's what I grew up with, that the street games were intense, so I play because it matters. Like, and, and, and that type of conversation that, you know, the dedication that like Pico and, and, and uh, Lee Grace have to play their type of football, which is I have to be ready all the time, I have to be dedicated, I have to walk in the gym, I have to do all that stuff. Jack does all that, but then Jack will dedicate his game to being creative. Yeah. And he's like, listen, I have to make this team tick. So the difference in his his um sort of pressure comes is that I have to be the one to be the difference for my team. Lee Grayson and, and Pico are the thing, and I've be the ones that drive the team. Yeah. So and, and there's different and how do you handle that? That's the to me that that was always fascinating to me. I would sit and talk to footballers. All day, like even even 
going back to meeting different ones throughout the pro- course of my career and everything I've done, or even as a coach when I went to Scotland, and you meet all these personalities and these people come into the club and sit and talk to you. I would sit and ask them questions. What was he like? Why did he do that? Why did you do that? And it was like, because the way I look at it was, I, I was probably a, a bit of a football fan first. I just loved it. Like, would have watched old Leeds games with my dad. I would have watched Liverpool in the 80s. I would have watched all the World Cups for Ireland. would have came up just watching old videos of games because when Liverpool started struggling, you end up going back and watching them when you were winning stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. You started <laughs> watching all that. You know, like, I could, I could tell you, I, like, the Gleish scored in the European Cup, Kennedy scored, you know, the penalties, all that. So I had all that knowledge because I just couldn't handle Liverpool not winning during the 90s. So I used to go back and watch videos. So that stuff, you know, like Sooness, I would have loved Sooness. And then, like, you know, them types of... Johnny Giles was a big hero of my dad, so I grew up watching him a lot. Like, so when I, whenever I got around footballers, sometimes I'd be a bit busy, but I just pick their brains and ask them questions. And this gives me a great chance to do it. Like, so I'm yeah. probably lucky and in the element a little bit here, you know. Perfect for you. Um, you're a co-commentator as well. How yeah. how do you how do you feel about that? First of all, how do you what have you learned and and do you enjoy it? First of all, I do enjoy it. Yeah, I enjoy it when the, and especially when the games are good. I really enjoy it. Everybody enjoys watching a good game. I, I, I probably would have watched the games. And anyway, um, they asked me last year, last summer, I think, um, Shane Robinson had done a couple of games and then he had said, you know what, Graham's home and my wife and kids were still in Scotland and I had nothing, I had really nothing on. So it was like, you want to have a, I went down, I ended up working with some great people. Con Morphy is brilliant. Um, and he's he worked well together, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah and in fairness to Con, like Con coached me a lot for the first month. Uh, small little pointers that now we just end up talking together. Um, and then Des Curran came in for a little bit, and that was good because Des gave me a few as well. Um, I, I try and look at it from a coach's point of view. I think that's the difference with, I, I, like, I'm... I'm, I'm not saying I'm this way or that way, but I, I, Con, I speak to Con afterwards, and a few of the, the other lads would say that like you're, you're talking about the, the patterns in the game and the, and the, how momentum changes on certain things, and and he says, would you be? But that's the way I'd look at the game as a coach and say, right, how do I counteract what they're doing, or how do I? Right, this is what's causing Sligo trouble. This yeah. is why they're struggling. And then Con sometimes goes, well, what can they do? And I go, well. There's two things I go, you can either do this or this, and you give that bit of insight. And then sometimes I just comment on what you see, and that it's a lovely bit of skill or and, and, and that type of stuff. So I always, I'm always, be, I've always been analytical watching football. I just explained why I've always been analytical watching football and seeing, um, and even like even watching games back. It's funny, I remember what I watched the game back. I think I got, I think it was about. 2007, 2008, we were playing, we were doing really well at Drotter at the time, I think we had just won the league. And I went back and watched the semi-final that we played, Bray. And in the game, I thought, I thought I'd done great. I was like, I got stitches, got <laughs> stitches here, stitches here, no loads of head knocks, Vaseline, <laughs> like proper thought, this is Colin Henry stuff here, like, you know, <laughs> right. And I thought, I just played well, played right side of centre back. We got into the final and I watched the game back and I was I was looking back thinking, you said, what are you doing? Like some of the stuff we've done in the game that but at the time I was in the moment thinking, Yeah, I'm, I'm having a great game. <laughs> I remember looking back going, What are you doing, Graham? Like take a touch there or play him or like head that to your full back or like knock that back to your goalkeeper. I thought I had a great game. So looking back, I was like, geez, I wasn't that, oh, I didn't play that well as I thought I did. But And had you not watched yourself really before that sort of game, like much, or is this kind of your first eye opener to, hold on, I should actually watch myself a little bit more now and no, be a little I, I bit more analytical? Watch, yeah, maybe. I used to watch myself, but again, I had moved on. My expectations of myself had moved on by then. When I was looking back, I was, I think I was 22 playing in that game. So I look back on ah, here, like, you know, you, I, I was more of a, 
I've moved I've moved on from that. But we we were very analytical at, at Drotada because of Paul. Paul would have made us watch videos religiously and the and the video sessions would have been long. Um and then until the point where we, we, we were able to say to him, Listen, we need this needs to be streamlined and we trained us to Paul, he took that on board. But yeah, we, we you, you you watch I even sometimes struggle to listen to myself back sometimes, but I force myself to go um, and get through it so that I pick up stuff that I'm making sure I don't have any ticks or making sure I don't have a constant need to say certain things. Like sometimes I, I listen back and I go, I can I can feel myself thinking as the as I'm commentating and I'm like and I'm listening back going, get it out, Graham. Come on, I know what you're trying to say. Yeah. So I'm trying to explain something, but the pictures are moving and then I'm like, I need to hurry this up and it doesn't come out as well. So stuff like that I need to be better at and I need to just be I need to be a bit more polished, but do you know what? I think sometimes people just want you to say what you see and, and be the way I am. And if there's mistakes that we make, I think I called them out pretty quick and that that was us. That was my fault. Where yeah. I'm not going to hide I, think, it. I think when when I when I've listened to you commentate uh, or co commentate, I think that it, it works well the two of you because as you said, uh, he's doing the commentating, he's setting it up for you to uh, analyze and to give the viewers some information on what could happen, what should happen, maybe, or what did happen. Uh, yeah. So I think it works well. I yeah. think what you're discussing there now is just something that's, again, uh, you're analysing yourself and you will always, ha it's like looking at old pictures. There's pit some pictures you just will never like and people will tell you it's great, you know, and I could tell you that that bit of commentary was the best bit of commentary ever and there's one little bit in that commentary that you'll hate for the rest of your life and you just can't do anything about it. So yeah. you, you, you have to accept the overall thing of, Generally, you're doing doing a good job at it, so uh, always try and improve. But uh, don't be too don't be too self critical on yourself because uh, you go down the other side of the hill where yeah. you'll, you you yeah. you start making you mistakes. End up not say, you end up not saying anything. Not saying anything. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Actually, just while we're talking about that for the second, um, so is is that something you're saying like a really good at is self reflection? Um, how important would would that be for you as a coach in terms of reflecting your performance as, as uh, in your coaching capacity? Because that's obviously a really important aspect to coaching. Yeah, like, I, like I, I may, I was, I tell you what, I tell you a story that we had, and it, and it, again, it's been able to spot it. Um, so I think a couple of weeks ago we had a game, and there was a young lad that was at Luke, and he's only seventeen. I think he was playing at Luke, but he helps out with the under eights. He was coaching Dayton and 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 another lad as well. Yeah, and I said to him, "Come on in and help." And with the 14s National League side, and he was like, "You sure?" I was like, "Yeah, come on, I'm sure, coach. Just come on, see what you see what you take from, like, just just come in and see what you think, because it's it'll be six years. So I said, see what you're doing and how it affects what what you do older. To be honest, I needed a hand, and and it was good for him that he, I says, "You're gonna stay and watch." And I says, "Come on, then don't stand." And he came over and it was great. And one of the things happened right in front of the dugout where. I'm talking to one of our players and I'm like, I can see the pass before he receives it. I'm then telling him, he's on, bend it. Now he makes, the lad that doesn't hit the pass really well and it's not great. And I've turned to the, the lad, I think it's Aiden. He's coaching Aiden Duffy, him. yeah. Aiden yeah. Duffy. It's Aiden and I turned to him and I says, and he's like, looking and I went, that's my fault. And he went, how's it your fault? And I've gone, because I've basically given them direct instruction on, how, on what I've seen. I've seen it. The kid needs to see it and the kid needs to then realise what type of pass to play. So I said, that's my fault. And I have, so then he came in, I was talking to him on Monday and he said, yeah, do you know what? I caught myself doing that at the weekend where I'm giving direct instructions. So I'm saying, shoot, pass and it might be on for the kids to do that but so you have to then change instead of giving direct instructions to kids you go right what's on what can you do you know and, and you change that but it's a really good question Nathan I would have I've changed the, me, the way I've probably approached coaching with kids because when you come out playing you, you have your ego as I'm a player and the kids all play and I know the great I'd always had a great relationship with the groups I coached but what happened was, if I left that group, they'd probably dip a little bit. And I thought, 
I was thinking, oh well, but that's wrong. That's wrong. Like so my my thing is I, I try and make every group coachable for every coach that comes in after me. I try and make them be as hungry and as driven for themselves and not to just impress me. Um, I try and make them feel as good about themselves as they can and then I give them information. So I, again it's all about it's all about them and that's probably changed from when I first started coaching at 32 and I thought, yeah, here we go, I've just retired, I'm gonna show I'm gonna change the world as a coach. I've then realized I don't need to change the world. I need to change them and try and make them believe in themselves more. So in terms of reflecting yeah, after defeats, after victories, you reflect. But I think the biggest thing for coaches, are your players happy to see it? Are they looking forward to showing you how good they are? And that's the bit you want to inspire children because when you leave them, you want that same attitude and that same desire to be what you want to be, to carry on whether they're, whether they're with you as a coach or not, regardless. Like, so when people ask me, why, why do you have build these relationships with kids and where you have that um, rapport with kids that you can grab gather a group it's because I, I make it about them and that yeah. sounds silly because I'm here talking about it but I do like you know it is it's one It's one of the things you have to do as a coach to learn to be a coach is to remember that now you're 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 over it, it's it's about them now and you, you've had your playing time and, and, and it's the ability to be able to as you said develop them in whatever manner that uh, is needed 